As the Israeli military continues to push deeper and deeper into the south of Gaza, pressure is now mounting on Israel's government to do more to secure the release of more than 130 hostages that are still being held by Hamas and other militants. At this very moment, another rally is taking place in Tel Aviv. Thousands are attending, including some of the recently released hostages. There were 105 captives, including 80 Israelis, who were released during that recent week-long truce that ended on December the 1st. Israel freed 240 Palestinians in exchange. Let's turn now to Hen Havigdori. His wife, Sharon, and his daughter, Noam, were both taken hostage, and then they were freed as part of the hostage negotiations last week. Khan, thank you so much for making time for us. Thank you for having me. Khan, I can't imagine what that time was like when your daughter and your wife weren't with you, and I also cannot imagine the moment you were reunited. Take me to the moment of the reunion. What was that like for you? Uh... It's the, it's, it's the number one question that I get. And every time I try to, to do, uh, to, to think about something else, but I keep going with, with this uh, metaphor. Uh, I don't know if, you, if, if you're a mother, but I, I, I talk to everybody like they know, they know what is to like to hold the baby to the first burn for the first time in their hands. So multiply it by, I don't know, 10. And this, this is the feeling. They, they're having the rebirth of your family after 50 days of agony, pain, uh, uh, missing them, thinking about them, not knowing anything about them, to hold them and to see them and to breathe them and to smell them. It's a joy that I cannot compare to any point of my life. We were, I'm sorry, <laughs> we were just showing some very emotional um, pictures of you and your wife embracing your son and you, you, your wife embracing your daughter is there with you. It's just, it, it's so much. It's so much. It really was like a rebirth. Um, how are your wife and your daughter doing now? I, for so many, they feel like, okay, you're back home. Now the story's over. But I can't believe that that's the case. What is it like for them? First of all, the story is not over from two obvious reasons. The first reason is that our own story, uh, my family story has not ended. The chapter number one has ended and now we are going to chapter number two, which has two uh, main things for me, two main missions for me. The first mission is to rebuild my family. And I can say that both Sharon and Noam are strong people. My other son, Omer, who is 16 and has been with me through all this uh, period, is also very strong. And when you think about rebuilding our family, I'm always saying that the foundation is strong, the workers are hardworking, excellent working, but it needs to take time because to rebuild always takes time. And we're giving it the time. We have all the help we can get, psychologists, medical, anything. We are very well loved. We have all of those very strong <coughs> surround families and friends. So we're good in that area. The other mission, which is not, which is almost the same as important as the first one, is the mission that this is the national mission. And in, in the case that I'm talking here to the Canadian people, international mission, which is to bring every hostage back home and to bring it as soon as possible. As you uh, uh, mentioned earlier, there are not thousands, but ten thousands of people in uh, in Tel Aviv uh, protesting, urging our government uh, to do any kind of a deal, to pay any price to get them those people out of there. And I think uh, this is not only an Israeli uh, issue. This is not only a, a, a Jewish issue. This is a humanitarian issue and uh, an international issue. And I think every man, especially in uh, democratic states, like your fine country of Canada, which I, I have the pleasure of, uh, uh, um, uh, why I forget the word? Visiting? Oh, I forgot. Uh, visiting, thank you, sorry. <laughs> you uh, which I have the pleasure of visit visiting uh, once or twice. Uh, every democratic people who uh, think that the human uh, rights are above 
all, the first and the foremost right of a person is to be free. And because we are uh, similar in our mind and thinking about this as a democratic person, everyone, especially from your viewers, Natasha, should do anything he can do to help us bring those people back home and to help us bring this horrible, horrible situation, which I have been there for 15 days, to a conclusion, to a happy end like I have, like I had. Can I ask you something? What What did you tell your son? Because you and Omer were at home and half your family taken hostage. H how did you reassure your son? Well, um, at the first, at, at, at the night of the 7th of October, when we realized that something is bad is going to happen, and just in a, in a short uh, article, I, I just said that the girls were missing for two weeks, which is 14 days of agony, pain, and unknowing. We don't talk about it like that because you have a great question. So I just came to him and, I, and, and I, we made a deal. And the deal was, I'm not hiding from him any information and he is not hiding from me any emotion that he has. Mm. So this deal worked pretty, pretty well. And uh, he knows everything. I uh, we used to to make a, re a re debriefing uh, talk at the end of all uh, day. Hug it up, go say I love you, and go to bed. And this is, works very, very well. While you have the joy and the complexity of having your family reunited, as you rightly mentioned, there are so many who would give anything to be in your place to have their their parents, their grandparents, their children back, their siblings back. What do you say to them, those who are still waiting? For me, there's, there's not those, there is still our, yeah. because during this fight, during this mission of bringing the hostages back, I come to know wonderful people from all across the Israeli society, painting, agonizing, worried, and when my girls got released, they were really, really, really happy for me because we said that we are brothers. We are brothers and sisters of the kidnappers family. And they're, I, I don't need to talk through uh, TV to them because I talk to them on the phone on a daily basis. And I tell them the joy is enormous. You deserve that joy. Your government should to should do anything in her power to make every and each one of the 138 people still in Gaza and their family reunite. It's not my story. It's not my personal story. Mm. It's a national story. It's an international story. And this is, I talk to them. I see the pain. They are my brothers. They are my sister. And I will keep on fighting for them and for their loved ones until the last one is going to get back home. I hope you're right. I read somewhere that your daughter, Noam, at least in the initial days, because she was released on November 25th, she wasn't letting you out of her sight. What, mm -hmm. what was mm -hmm. that like? What, what, what did she say to you? Simple as that. Daddy, don't leave me. Oh. And uh, I honored that uh, request, and I'm happy to report that this is uh, fading, fading out a little by little. Was she scared, Khan, that she would be taken away or you would be, or she was just psychologically, like what, what do you think was going on for her? Well, uh, I think this is a little bit a uh, personal question and my daughter is a very private uh, okay. lady. So we just keep it that way. That is totally fair. Let's get back to you because you mentioned this is a shared story, a national story, an international story. And storytelling is really, from what I understand, part of what you do. You are a writer, you're a comedic writer, you're a well-known entity in Israel. And I wonder when the history books of this time and this experience are written, what, what will it say about how Israel has managed this and survived this? Well, I think the... the we are living in just a crazy uh, period and every event is on a daily basis. So historically speaking, you need to go further away to have a perspective 
on the event to see to answer your question but i think uh that there was many wars in israel i think this is one of the most just just justified uh war everybody in israel are united by the thought and uh, the the motivation to uh, eliminate the ability the military ability of hamas which is now well known that they are terrorist group there is no one that can uh, uh, imagine things that they do i even dare to say most most of the people compare between hamas and isis some of them compare between hamas and the nazis and i have to tell you natasha there's they are not like the nazis they are the new nazis they found adolf hitler book mein kampf translated to arabic teach in schools under those schools there were bombs and missile directing to uh, civilians in israel they were uh, uh, doing the massacre uh, uh, eisensgruppen uh, style with with and some of them were in uh, were on amphetamines those things those points that i just mentioned are telling me that there are the nazi we have nothing to do with them and the rest of the world when they say something like uh, uh, from the river to the sea palestine will be free should know that this slogan this chanting the meaning of it is the elimination of israel by the same thing that they did to us in the 7th of october and one more thing natasha if i may we are suffering from this just because of the geographic thing we are closer to the to the extreme islamic don't let yourself uh, uh think that because there is a vast sea between us and you you won't be next this radical fanatic islamic terrorist group should be eliminated for the best of humanity not just for us i hear everything you're saying and i want to return to how we started this conversation which was about your utter utter happiness and now we're in the holiday season now we're into hanukkah and share with us your wish for your family for every family that is dealing with a lot of loss uh during this hanukkah season okay, i think i already said it but i don't mind saying anything again i just uh we just light some uh, candles up on the third day of hanukkah i wish this little small things of happiness family happy would be the part of everyone from my brothers and sisters to the uh, to the hostage family they deserve it the government owned it and you know hanukkah is the uh, festival of festival of lights mm. so i wish for the other uh, uh, person uh, the other you, you the, the all the humanity i wish that the light will and i know that the light will win and we uh, accomplish uh, we, we uh, stop, eliminate any uh darkness that there are in people and just as more as the light goes on the darks goes away and away and i hope eventually the light will win khan i hope you're right i wish you and your family so much happiness on Thank behalf of all much. of us i'm so glad your family is reunited and together we wish you all the best thank you so much for your time today thank you natasha thank you very much take care